Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today we're taking a look at an Orion Observer Series 134. What is it? Well, it's an astronomical telescope designed for looking up at the night sky. Light gets gathered by a 134 millimeter diameter mirror in the back, gets diverted to the secondary mirror here. This is the eyepiece. You look through here and to focus the eyepiece, you rack the focuser in and out. So it's on an equatorial mount, and if you haven't seen one of these complicated looking contraptions before, the reason it's shaped this way is because if you aim this axis up towards the North Pole, or Polaris in the Northern Hemisphere, or towards the South Pole in the Southern Hemisphere, it means that you can track the telescope just by using this knob here. You just turn this like this. Now for convenience, you can get a motor that can do that for you. I didn't get that, I just used the telescope manually. So there's a 6x30 optical finder here that helps you find things, and there are two eyepieces included, a 25mm and a 10mm. The best part about all of this is the price. $249 complete. That is not a price for just the optical tube. You get everything I just mentioned for $249 at the time of filming. So if you've been following telescope prices over the past three or four years, Telescopes have gotten pretty expensive these days, to the point where even entry-level budget equipment like Orion's Star Blast, which I've been recommending for decades, starting to creep their, up there in price to the point where you're starting to see some price resistance from people looking to get an entry-level telescope. I'm pleased to see that manufacturers are coming up with lower-priced alternatives like this one for serious amateur astronomers that don't break the bank, but on the other hand, don't sink down to the level of department store grade junk scopes. I have been getting a lot of requests to review this model. Now in the Observer series towards the top of this line, there are at least two other models. There is a 90 millimeter refractor, and then there is a 114 millimeter Richfield reflector. I've been curious myself, so I just went ahead and bought one of these. The scope arrived in one carton weighing 28 pounds. This was encouraging. I've opened up a lot of entry-level scopes and expected this to be much lighter. Opening up the package, everything just screams, made in China. Well, okay, let's take a look. The scope comes double boxed and there are three main subcartons inside containing the complete optical tube assembly, the equatorial head, and the tripod. Can't find the counterweight? It's tucked inside this side compartment in the packing foam. There are two eyepieces and they feel awfully light. The 25mm is labeled SUPER. Well, okay, I guess we can allow one piece of marketing on behalf of the scope. The optical tube is better than I expected. The rings in Vixen compatible plate are well made and there are threaded inserts on top of the rings, a nice touch. There are collimation screws on both the primary and the secondary and there's a six x 30 optical finder on a bracket. Oddly, my finder is not labeled. The focuser is made of plastic and has an unusually tall profile. As with many inexpensive Newtonians, the draw tube of the focuser extends into the light path when racked in. This seems a little bit unusual considering how tall the focuser is. When I saw the equatorial head, I began getting excited. Without even using it, I could already tell this is far better than the EQ1 and EQ2 style equatorial heads we've all been putting up with for far too long. It appears to be intelligently designed by someone who actually uses telescopes. One of the great pleasures for me is watching a telescope rise up from the ground as it's being assembled, like a phoenix rising out of a plain cardboard box. Overall, this looks like a very nice package, especially at this price. There aren't a lot of signs of cost cutting. My only initial concern is the long-term durability of that plastic focuser. The telescope weighs around 19 pounds. It's just enough that it'll stay put, but it's not so heavy that you can't pick it up and move it in one piece. For reference, Orion's X-T 4.5, that is the smallest of their Dobsonians, weighs about a pound less. So when you get this out here, the first thing I usually do is align the finder. Now you'll see the corner of that silo over there. I've aligned the finder to the telescope in the daytime. One thing about this one is the finder bracket travel was all the way at the end to get it to align. Yours may be a little bit different. Now you've heard me complain before about the quality of the mounts on inexpensive telescopes. They can be very frustrating to use. 
Not this one. This one's actually quite well designed. The, the actions are smooth and the slow motion controls here, which I've complained about before also, which the knobs always fall off. Yes, these fall off too, even when you put Loctite on the screws, but they stay on a lot longer than the ones that I've shown you before. These are quite usable. Now there are two wing nuts here that tighten down on the axle. You see, I let that one go a little bit. The trick here is to tighten them down to the point where they're about halfway. You want the screws to be tightened down enough so that the telescope doesn't move when you let go, but you don't want them to be so tight that you can't move the telescope while you're looking around. So once you do like locate your object, let's say you, you're going here, provided your polar alignment is good and the object is centered, you should be able to keep the object centered in the eyepiece by just feeding yourself some right ascension with this knob here. So I've had this thing out for several nights now and I, it's quite good. I mean, not just for the money, it's good, period. Now you're gonna find some minor frustrations with the mount as I did. I wish it were smoother. I wish these axes kind of moved a little bit better and the, the tight tension on these knobs could be a little bit better. But you know what? At this price point, I think I'm being unsportsmanlike by complaining about that. But I did wanna mention if you're a beginner, you're gonna find at least some minor frustrations with the mount when you're first learning to use it. Other than that, I don't really have much to say. I mean, I'm out here looking and I found the ring nebula, the dumbbell, I split Alberio into nice orange and blue components. I split Eta Cass. I split Mizar. I looked at M13, M92, and M3. Those are some nice globular clusters, as well as the showpiece objects in Sagittarius, the Lagoon, the Trifid, the Swan, and several other objects in that area. The eyepiece here is okay. It feels like a cheap piece of plastic. It's going to get you by until you get something else, which you almost certainly will. The Super 25 is the one that I used a lot. The 10 millimeter eyepiece, as you might expect, is a little bit less useful, but if you have to increase the magnification, it will do until you find something a little bit better. I am a little concerned about the long-term durability of this plastic focuser. The profile is extremely high. The top of the eyepiece on the Super 25 millimeter Plossel is almost eight inches off the surface of the tube. And in fact, I've had this thing for a few days now and I've already bumped this against the side of a door jam a couple of times. Now I think the optical tube is good enough that it can grow with you if you decided to get a better mount later on. So this comes off with this screw here, and at the bottom you have a Vixen compatible dovetail plate that is a standard in our industry. And this is another mount that I have. You can place it here, and now you have the full benefit of electronic tracking and go-to capability. Now, just keep in mind this mount costs about $1,000, but you can get ones that are a little bit cheaper. So. I did try to do some really basic imaging with this thing. I would not call this thing a serious ast astrophotography tool, but if you wanted to learn on it, you could do that. I have a planetary imager, which I put into the eyepiece, and one night I just stuck this thing on the moon and took some images. Here's an image of the lower half of the moon with Clavius at the bottom, and here is a composite stitch of five individual images. Okay, so do we have a new top recommendation in the ultra-budget beginner category? I think we do, yes. So if you followed me over the years, you know it's been a very, very long time since I've been able to recommend a good piece of budget gear for beginning astronomers. I've been frustrated the past couple of decades at least. It's been the same old stuff that I've been recommending, that is Ryan Shore Tubedi, Starblast, and their clones. The problem with both of these, and I still do recommend these, is the mount. You have to find something to set them on, and many beginners get that wrong, at least at first. With the Orion Observer 134, you don't have to worry about that. Everything is complete here. There is no need to purchase anything else. The mount is good. It's much better than the beginner mounts of the past. I'll repeat some cautions here that I've already talked about. If you are new at this, the mount might cause you a little bit of frustration the first few nights you use it. Keep at it, you'll get it. Also, yes, I keep coming back to this, that plastic focuser, and the reason I keep harping on this is because the rest of this telescope is so good, and I know that they can deliver quality at this price because, for example, the rings and the plate are first rate. It has become nearly impossible to replace OEM stock focusers on low-cost equipment, and that is a long-term concern of mine. Maybe in Mark II version, they'll change that and get it right. 
But other than that, as long as the samples are as good as this one that I have here, if Orion can hold the line on pricing, I think we have a new winner here. This is now my first recommendation for beginning astro amateur astronomers. I'm also anxious to see the other two models in this series, the 114 and the 90 millimeter refractor. You know, when I first bought this thing, my intent was to play with it and review it for a while and then maybe, you know, sell it at a discount to a club member. But now I think I'm gonna keep this thing. Not only can I demonstrate this for beginners as a good learning tool, I think I may just use it, period, if I feel like it. I think it's that good. Okay, so there you have it. A look at the Orion 134 Equatorial Newtonian Telescope. I hope this review has helped you to determine if this telescope is right for you. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.